That's Keen from their debut album, Hopes and Fears. That's yeah. the only album they've had out so far, aren't they? Yes. They must work on a new one. And Tom, Tom Chaplin from Keen, has edged his way into the room, looking splendid. Oh, there's no effort to sit. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Let me move. That banana. I'm moving my man bag. <laughs> I've got a small man bag. Tom, how are you? It's lovely to see you. I'm very well indeed. Grab a I've microphone. Just been, uh, I've just been listening to uh, you two doing their sound check. Wow, how exciting is that? Extremely exciting. Does it yeah. sound good? Uh, they sound all right, yeah. How many songs yeah. are they doing? I don't know. I think they're doing, I think they're teaming up with, uh, or Bono is teaming up with Macca to do Sergeant Pepper, which is what was playing as I came in, wow. um, which is uh, kind of surreal. That is really, it is kind of weird being here. What's your first impressions when you walked on the site? Were you here yesterday? Did you we actually, yesterday? Well, actually, we played here uh, on Wednesday night. We did our own show here. Um, so we kind of got a feel for the place then. And Tom, anyone come? <laughs> there are a few people. Because okay, I'm, yeah. I'm worried. What if people don't turn up today? I know, exactly. Wouldn't it be terrible if you went out there and there were only like 300 people? It and took us about well, you know two what? hours to get from, uh, from the other side of Park Lane to here, so I guess... Uh, uh, now, that's partly because of the homosexual community. You're out uh, <laughs> once again telling us how proud they are. I think we know. <laughs> really, you know what that's become. It's just an excuse for a nice day out and to meet some fellas. Yes, it's, it seems a bit of a strange day to schedule uh, uh, two things like to that. To be fair, once. I think they already had, they had the day dibbed oh, first. Did they? And oh, why right. should they move just because we want to end world poverty? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's, it's nice. But it adds to the atmosphere out there. Um, but what do you think of this place here? I mean, the scale of this is huge. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty ridiculous. There are a lot of trucks and people, and it's, I think it's just going to be a great day. I'm sure it'll be completely disorganised. No one will be knowing what they're doing, but, you know, that's part of the fun, I think, of this kind of thing. Now, Tom, I've heard that if bands um, overrun in the allocated slot, because obviously there's a huge <laughs> number of backs to get through, we've got people all over the world waiting to join in as well. If they overrun, the They'll stage... Just cut keen, you know? Well, the stage revolves. And yeah. apparently, if the numbers are going on too long, they're just going to start spinning you out, like they used to at Saturday night at the London Palladium, and you'll just be going... So you've got to be crisp there. You, are you up to the task? We are. We are. We're only doing two songs, so I think we'll be inside our ten-minute right. th uh, slot. But, um, you know, they, I don't really mind. I don't mind if they've got to get things moving. I don't mind being shunted off stage. Which songs are you doing? Uh, we're going to do... I think we're going to do Everybody's Changing and Bed Shaped. L you know what? I was just thinking they're the two I'd have done if I was keen. <laughs> Would you? Yeah, no, we were talking about what to play a minute ago. Yeah, and we, played, bed we shaped. played uh, Somewhere Only We Yeah, know, but so. first of all, you're going to play Everybody's Changing. Yeah. It's a great album, by the way. It's real... Uh, I mean this, but in a kind of a positive way and in a slightly negative way. It's <laughs> Dad's Rock. <laughs> you know, it's a sort of music you hear. Great. I'll put it on in my car. My wife I don't know. I can see that as anything other than <laughs> my, my, no, no. It's a good thing. Well, I'm a dad. Don't be down on us. But you know, it's a, what I mean is it's a manly rock of a sort. It's a sort of rock you know that in about five years Jeremy Clarkson will like. <laughs> it's, it's too yeah. new for him right now, Tom. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's great. It's great driving music, isn't it? It is great driving music. I remember when I before I got kind of sick of hearing the songs. I kind of uh, used to spend hours sort of driving off, and and when we had kind of rough mixes of the songs, just sort of driving off in my car and mm. and listening to it. And you're right. It's good to drive to. And you've got, you know, a fa fabulous voice, but it's a great voice to try and sing along to. Mm. <laughs> when you were waiting outside there, we were playing... Which one would we play again? Somewhere Only We Know. Somewhere Only We Know. And uh, Andy, unfortunately, had headphones on and was singing along. <laughs> now, I'm the only one in there. That's not a sound I'd wish on anyone else. Good, no. Well, I think everyone should sing along, though. I think that's one of the, the things about our music. We feel it, it's about sort of inviting people in, and, and uh, you know, people seem to come to our shows and, and just love what, to sing everything. What's that bit where that song that goes, if we meet on the other side and uh, in the morning... What's Bend that and break, that How one. does that go, that bit, that? I'll meet you in the morning when you... I'll work. meet you in the morning, side. that one. <laughs> meet I'll meet the you side, on yeah. the morning, that's it. <laughs> That's you brilliant. see, yeah. I sing along in the car. Yeah, 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 people have enjoyed me singing along to that with the roof down <laughs> many can, on many an occasion. You can take my place today on stage. <laughs> if you like. need any backing vocalists, we are there for you. <laughs> Maybe a little kind of duet would be uh, appropriate. Um, there's only the three of you in the band, of course. Yes. It, can you feel a space this kind of big? I mean, can, no, I don't mean that negative way, but you know, it's like a lot of people are turning up. I mean, we're starting the show with loads of trumpets out there, and there's bands have got you know big, big you know groups behind them. There's just three, three young men. We're very loud, though, apparently. Because I'm never out the front, I can't tell. Yeah. But, but everyone says we're very loud and very rock, which we, is quite a surprise, I think, for a lot of people who come and see us. Well, especially as you are essentially a piano-based trio. Yes. But Tim can get some extraordinary noise out of that piano. I love the piano. Don't you worry about it. I love the piano in rock. It's, uh, you get too little of it. Hey, we better get the news. Yeah. Uh, Tom, you can stick around for a little bit longer. And we'll chat I'd love to. That yeah. would be lovely. Okay, we're well, with Tom from Keen. Uh, we also have Snoop Doggity Dog coming up. <laughs> and Dio. Uh, all on this part of the broadcast from Live 8. Stick around. 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. I think that's one of the greatest uh, British pop stroke rock... Pop or rock. 
records <laughs> ever produced. <laughs> well done. Pop and rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have Tom with us from Keen Keen. They're performing live at Live 8 later on today. Uh, what, what time are they? When are you on? Who are you after? Who are you before? Do you know? Uh, I, we're, we're on before Travis, and I, th- I can't remember who we're after, actually. But we're, we're on at half past four, I think. Half four. OK. Subject to delay, delays, which I'm sure there will be. By, by, yeah, so you've been about nine o'clock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> half four, well, so that's when we have switched TV coverage back over to BBC One, apparently, depending on how long Venus takes to finish off um, a Lindsay Davenport. Do you think she will? <laughs> Are you a tennis fan, Tom? Oh, I can't stand it. Every time Wimbledon comes on, I start, I just start cringing. I can't cope with it. Sorry a... to upset anyone who's a big fan of tennis. He, he can't help it. He's just a boy. He is, just yeah. a boy in a band. Yeah. He can't help it. There's something a bit it. creepy about it, the way that it's all that sort of love between all the tennis players and they call each other by their first name. They were like, I can't, I can't, it's a bit creepy. They I can't cope with it. Well, because they're watching themselves getting changed all day. They've seen exactly. each other's privates. You have to be friends then, don't you? <laughs> yes. You can't, I think once you've seen someone naked, you have to like them. <laughs> yes. That's it. We're, we're, you know, it's, it's the way it works. I certainly feel that way. Um, Tom, is this yes. your stage gear you're wearing here or are you going to get changed? More, more or less my stage gear. I might lose my jacket for the. Because uh, you're not really known for being, you're not like a, a looking band in terms of, you're not like Roxy Music in its early days, no. you don't come on in leopard skin. <laughs> no. Uh, Roxy Music are playing live from the Berlin part of the concert, by the oh, way, at the Brandenburg Gate, uh, which will be exciting. Um, but you're but you're kind of casual in your approach, don't you? Yes, I, I, we don't kind of put too much emphasis on the whole thing. I think we just, you know, we try and just be all about our music. Really. But you're stylish as well, there's a certain style at work. My yellow socks. Yeah, but you've got a good look going on, uh, you know, so it's a nice look uh, for Thank the young you. fella. <laughs> um, now, the other two members of your band, uh, yes. Tim and Richard, yes. right? they both wear glasses, don't they? They do, yeah. Will they be wearing glasses on stage tonight? No, they won't. They, Why they, do they, they not wear glasses? They put plastic in their eyes before going. They've both been talking about getting their eyes lasered. You know where you get it? Oh. In, I don't know whether... I wouldn't mo- like I, someone sticking a laser in my eye. Well, it's like a Bond film, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. I will do your eyes, Mr Bond, but first you must tell me <laughs> whether or not you will be playing bed-shaped. <laughs> um, so, uh, the, and is this vanity, though, when they go on stage tonight with the glasses? Uh, I don't know. I should imagine it's partly vanity and part, partly a sort of pr- case of practicality because I guess they move around a lot, so they don't want their glasses falling off. Right, Maybe those little things that kids at school had where you could get it tied around the back for playing sports. Tom, as someone who wore glasses all my life, including very, very heavy ones, they don't just fall off. <laughs> they're, they're, they're quite, we've had a couple of hundred years of glasses technology. It's total the vanity, them, then. Yeah, it's vanity, isn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> I noticed on the cover of the album, or on the photos of the album, they weren't wearing the glasses. No. And yet when you meet them, they wear the glasses. Well, tell them to stop being so wide about it. They're attractive men in glasses as well as out. They are. Right? They're very attractive men. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of bookish, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're a, book- you're a bit of a bookish-looking band, really, aren't I you? I think we probably are, yeah. Mm. Well, we, we, we like to be uh, studious, That's as not well a bad as a thing. rock band. Presumably, you finished your second album. <laughs> no. <laughs> we keep getting offered to do things, so we haven't even started it yet. Well, what's Although, wrong? That you're lazy. Because that last album, how yeah. long ago did the last album come out? About a year and oh. a few months A ago. year and a few months? Yeah. And you haven't even started recording the new one? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. You're good. We're uh, trying, but, you know... Tom, I'm warning you, you will up. just disappear. People we, will forget about you. Well, if that might be good for a bit. People, but before long, they're going to start thinking, yeah, whatever happened to King? <laughs> they have a great band, and you'll bring out a new album, and they go, oh, they've reformed. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Have you written new material yet? Uh, we have. We've got, I mean, t- I was listening to some of the demos that Tim's done last night, and right. they're really great. We're, we're all very excited about the whole thing, so uh, we are sort of champing at the bit to get in the studio. But So Tim writes the songs then, mate. He does, yeah. Does he write the lyrics as well? He does, yeah. Wow, so he gets all the money then. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> he, makes, he must make almost all the money. <laughs> We're make. not interested in money. No, but he will be getting all of the money you're not interested in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's interested in money. <laughs> no, we, we have... We, we, uh, yeah, no, you're a band. You're a band. <laughs> they, they, they were, no, you were all at school together, weren't you? We were, yeah. Yeah, we went to... In fact, we've known each other since we were little boys. Which uh, is, Hastings uh, Secondary School, wasn't it? Uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> and then before that, was it? You, you come from Battle in Sussex. Yeah, we went to a little school in Battle. Well, I mean, yeah. So I've known um, Tim's mum and dad are actually my godparents. So I've known him since I was the year zero. Isn't that lovely? That's really sweet. Yeah, it's really sweet. If and when you do fall out over the fact that he's getting all the money, <laughs> it's going to be all the harder for your respective families to deal it with. It will. Yeah. It will uh, cause all sorts of problems. Um, but when they, they were both older than you, weren't they? So, so yeah. the, the the brothers there um, are they the same age? Are they? They're not twins, are they? Who? Richard and Tim. They're not brothers. They look the same. <laughs> they do. No, no, d- no. They're 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 not. I don't think connected. Uh, I think they are. I genetically. Think, I think uh, the dad the dad is the same. Father. <laughs> it's, it's, never it's possible. Battle being a small little place. Yeah. They kept that it kind is. of thing quiet. <laughs> <laughs> You're the talk of the town. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. What a terrible thing to just say about. It's a terrible. Thing. I do apologise. I will be. I'll be uh, relating that to them later um, t- on. I worry. do apologise. Um, but they were both older than you at school, weren't they? They were. 
And so but they looked after me. They weren't the kind of bullying type. Well, that's what I was asking, whether or not they still made you c- fetch stuff for them <laughs> and they still <laughs> whacked you with a towel when you were getting changed after the gig. Uh, Fick you. They do. They're, they're pretty mean to me. <laughs> um, you must be, presumably, though, enjoying the fact that you, you've hit so big. Because, you know, the album has sold so well. You're yeah, I think to, well to kind of told us that we'd be here amongst all these great people today and uh, having sold a few million records and, you know, having had a year of fantastic gigs is kind of pretty surreal because we, we spent a long time, you know, not getting anywhere. So I think that to, to, to actually now have this kind of wave of success has been um, really great for us as people. And when did you hear you had the call? When did, uh, when did you hear that you'd been invited to perform at Live 8? Uh, well, it's kind of been pencilled in. It was pencilled in in our diary because we did the, the Hastings Beer Festival the other night. <laughs> and uh, so we pencilled it into the diary as the, the special beer festival question mark. So right, it's, been, right. it's been sort of there, I think, for a few months now, right, actually, right. Um, ever since the, uh, the Band Aid single came out. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've known for a while, actually. Well, I don't remember getting the call. So you knew before the rest of the world knew. You knew before we all knew it was going to happen. It was kind of like. Yeah, well, it was, was, yeah. They were looking think, into trying to set it up, I guess. Yeah. I think it was a case of whether whether we'll be able to set it up or not, but uh, that was that, that became apparent a, a few weeks ago. And do you spend much time? Does Bob talk to you guys? Do you spend much time with Bob when you were doing the recording? Um, I didn't spend an enormous amount of time with him. I, he, I guess, his uh, his time's at a premium, especially at that kind of thing. But um, you know, we've we've done you know obviously our own research, and and we also know Richard Curtis, like I was saying earlier on. So yeah. we've we've kind of um, had our. Uh, finger on the pulse of it for a while, which is really good, you know, um, whatever we can do really to, to help spread the message. Is, is and, and the message is, without wanting to put too much pressure on you, the reason why Live Aid's happening, of course, it isn't a fundraising event today as such, is it? No, I think that's the great thing about it. I think that's why it's such a good idea. Um, well, it, I mean, in a way, it is a fundraising thing because, you know, if, if Tony Blair drops the, or, you know, and the G8 leaders drop the debt, um, change trade laws, you know, it's going to make a, a huge difference financially to a lot of great you know, a lot of countries in the world. So, uh, you know, I think it, in a way, it is a sort of fundraiser, but, you know, not in terms of putting... Yeah, not, not, but we're not asking people to give money today as such. No. It's, it's kind of, um, you're asking people, well, I'm not asking them to do anything because I'm here covering it impartially for the BBC. <laughs> but um, but certainly the people involved in the event, they're, they're, it's, it's yeah. really designed to raise awareness and to try Absolutely, and yeah. put pressure on those who can make a change, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, indirectly, you know, uh, down the line, I guess we, we are putting our hands in our pockets, but y- you're right. I mean, it is just about trying to persuade people um, to listen to the facts, and, and the facts are pretty uh, pretty scary, to be honest. I get the feeling, reading between the lines, and, and this is just my opinion, so I don't uh, this is not based on anything, so please don't read too much into this, but I get the feeling that Blair is pretty much on board anyway. I think he is. I mean, I, I think he's got some real vision with this, and I think that's a, that's something that people need. They need to meet, make that kind of leap of faith. Um, and I, I think he, he's he's getting there, and I, I hope that they can persuade George Bush to do the same, because I guess that's the kind of... It does seem to be the Americans, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know. uh, l- let me ask you about the bands that are here today. Is there anyone that you'd like to see who isn't on today? And I, that's not a, a negative about the people who are here. Uh, I just wonder if there's any bands that you would like to have seen live. Uh, I would seen have liked to have seen around? Blur, actually. And I, I actually know that I heard that Damon Albarn had been kind of mouthing off about uh, the whole thing in, on the radio, and uh, it's a bit of a shame actually, because I think uh, that for me they're one of the my favourite bands of all time, and Pulp as well actually. Just incidentally, yeah. just, uh, uh, are Blur not playing down at the Eden Project? I thought they were involved oh, they, down at the Eden Project. Oh, they playing? I'm Whoops, not sure. I put my foot in it. There. I don't know. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. I'm, I'm, um, maybe he's you know decided not to take part. But um, certainly that would have been great to see them. What about the Quo? Would you like to see the Quo here? <laughs> yeah, why not? The Quo <laughs> should be here, really. They should be here. I'm sure. That's kind of elder statement. statement I'm sure they haven't put anything else in for today. No. I'm sure they're still. I bet they're sitting by their answer machines right yeah, now, waiting, waiting, for, waiting the call. for the call. Let's. Uh, we should do a prank call. Should we <laughs> bring them up? Because you know my impersonation of Bob is yeah. spot on. Hello there, hello, Francis it's Bob Rossi. here. Why are you doing Lee Park? Come on, <laughs> come on, <to> Hyde Park. <laughs> Ask for Bob. <laughs> Ask for Bob. We about the gay pride. <laughs> Tom, what are you thinking? Uh-huh. All right, what are we going to play? Brendan Benson, new single. I don't know Brendan Benson. Well, you'll you'll learn something. Okay. He is brilliant. Peter Bonson there. <laughs> and who is he called? Brendan Benson. Brendan Benson. It's out on Monday, new Sounds single. Good. Who is he? Where is he from? He's What's American. He? But good. Tom will tell us more, because Tom said he's yeah, played Yeah, he's been on tour with us a couple of times, actually. He's a, he's a singer-songwriter from, from uh, Detroit, yeah. And his band is called The Stiff Tissues, which I think is a... Uh, Says speaks name. volumes. <laughs> um, you guys have been around for how long? How long have you been together as a working band unit? <laughs> Probably about seven or eight years. Although, I mean, Tim's been writing songs since, well, as far back as I can remember. So I guess we've kind 
kind of, uh, you know, been interested in the whole idea f for all our lives. And you played at the Hope and Anchor once, didn't you, years ago? We did, that was our first ever show. Wow. We played in that. We're actually watching some, because we're putting together a DVD uh, at the moment, we're actually watching some footage of, of the gig at uh, the Hope and Anchor, and all you can see is just people walking past with their fingers <laughs> in their ears and going out <laughs> of the door. So, really, a similar reaction we expect to see today, I, then. I hope so, yeah. Um, can clear the park. Uh, no, but you know, uh, the Hope and Anchor is, of course, of, for people who, who haven't been to London and see bands, I don't know, it's a tiny little pub in Islington. Yes. Well, it's actually not that tiny a pub. It's a reasonable-sized pub, but beneath it, there's a tiny little yeah. room where they have live music and where a lot of the punk scene took place years ago as well. Mm. They've moved, I went back there with The Damned a while ago to uh, look at the scene of where they played loads of gigs, and I remember my first ever rock gig was there, the first gig I went to see. I went to see, do you know I went to see? I think I've told you this story. Yeah, you have. Who? Billy Idol, wasn't no, it? No. Sex was, Pistols. No, I never saw the Sex Pistols live. X-Ray Specs. I saw X-ray specs of the Hope and Anchor, and I was yeah. about 16. It was first time I pogo, and I hit my head on the ceiling. <laughs> nice. And I went home with a terrible head, and I thought, well, I hope my dad doesn't know I've hit my head. It won't let me go and see a gig anymore. <laughs> but that was so noisy, seeing that band there. So I can only imagine how it was with Keen in there. It must have been just almost unbearable. It was, de well, it was certainly deafening from a musical <laughs> point of view. Because I would have thought you singing without an amp there would be kind of loud, because you've got a big old voice. I have. She, the, the girl who was doing the sound said that I had the loudest voice she'd ever heard in that <laughs> venue. She, had to, she couldn't turn it down enough. <laughs> She's still in care, you know. <laughs> She's still in a she hole carries the as scars. a result of the deafening scar <laughs> tissue you Actually, so, someone did write about us. The, the, the Institute for the Deaf wrote that, uh, that Keane's music's bad for your hearing. Just the way that, that we, the album was mixed is very kind of present. And it's, we're apparently top of the list in terms of uh, damage to people's <laughs> hearing. How proud your parents must be. Uh, but that wasn't deliberate, presumably. No, but that's more of an accolade than winning a Brit Award, as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. But you've won Brits, haven't you? We have. We won a couple, yeah. Well, that's very yeah. casual about that. Yeah. <laughs> On the one end, saying it doesn't matter, but you can say that with impunity because he has said Yeah, of exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. Are you big in America yet? Do they know you much over there? We're getting there. I mean, we, we did, we've been there for two months. We went there for two months uh, over the last, uh, well, well, wherever it was, April, May or something. Um, and uh, we had a, a really great tour. We sold out Radio City in New wow, York. Wow, that's and, pretty uh, good. That must be a lovely place to play. I it is thought, incredible, yeah. I think we, we've always dreamed of playing there, so it was uh, uh, realising that. Christmas Time, that's where they have the Rockettes performing, isn't it? The girls who do the high kicks. Is that right? I don't know. They weren't there when you were there, then? <laughs> no, they used to have the Oscars there, apparently. They did? Well, no, I don't think they ever did. Yeah, they did. No, they never did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. The Oscars have always been in LA. Have they? Yeah. No, they used to have them at radio. No, sometimes. you're wrong. <laughs> even if you're not, people are going to believe me more because I'm, you know, a film man. Um, that's how I win arguments at home with my wife. Even if she's right, I say, yeah, but I'm filmed 2005. <laughs> there you go. That's it. End of. You're quite good on that, actually. I, I quite like the way you... Quite good? How dare you, <laughs> you <laughs> whippersnapper. Right. But you, I, I like the way you analyse the films. I actually might go as far as to say that you're better than Barry Norman. Don't ever say that in my presence. <laughs> hey, but you know what? I don't really analyse the films. Here's what I try and do. I try and just talk about the film in the way I would talk about it to a friend and say, yeah. should you go and see it? Yes or no? Here's why, here's why not. Because it's not like... I really know much about What films. should I go and see at the moment? I think been Batman so Begins is great is, fun. Is War of the Worlds is great. Yeah. There's one bit in it where Tom Cruise is sucked up into an alien's body and it looks not dissimilar to an Alsatian's penis. <laughs> <laughs> that's the alien's body, not Tom Cruise. <laughs> and I don't know whether that's what Spielberg had in mind. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not deliberately, maybe just walking through a park, he'd seen one out the corner of his eye and it's such a, a horrific image, he thought, I'll use that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's bigger than your average jail station's dong. Yes, I would imagine. <laughs> but it's quite the moment. I hope I haven't spoiled that for anyone who hasn't seen the film yet. <laughs> well, they'll be waiting for it anyway. I won't tell you what becomes of it. <laughs> That's what they should have on the poster. What? See it. If only to see Tom Cruise disappear up a dog's bit. <laughs> 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 Take that, Scientology. <laughs> Tom, you better go and get ready for your gig, hadn't you? I suppose so, Haven't you yeah. got to go and do half an hour strict vocal warmings up? I will, and some kind of comedy 1930s you, gym class. Do you do any? Oh. I do do a bit, yeah. yeah. Especially uh, at the moment. I've been going a bit hoarse recently, so I'm trying to sort of look after my voice as much as I can. OK, well, go and look after it now. Yes. You will be going... Uh, performing live in front of, I believe, somewhere in the region of they estimate 85% of the world's population. <laughs> Don't 85% of the world's population will be listening to you later on tonight. Right, but not forget the words then. Okay, <laughs> and let's hope afterwards, you know we get minute by minute figures. If there's a sudden dip in the viewership after that, we'll know it's because you didn't warm up properly. <laughs> yes, and it'll it's be all awful. They'll say, Oh, you know what? I almost did a Chinese accent then, and that would have been so wrong. I think you would have that would have been so wrong. I'll do it for you in a minute, Andy. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Tom. Good luck today. I'm sure you don't need it. Thank you so much for popping by. I know it's a, it's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a stressful day for everyone. Oh, so we appreciate great. you We're coming to see us. To do morning. anything we can. Great. Take care, and uh, I'll see you later. Yes. Good indeed. luck on stage. Thank you. Mate. Keen will be performing live, live eight at about four, four thirty. Make sure you don't miss that.